And starting with these numbers, again, we just repeat really quickly, we look at how many people are male, 60 out of 100, what's the probability of pulling out a male, what's the chance of pulling out somebody who's both a male and a finance major, 48 divided by 100. The question we're going to answer right now is there are two, two, more, two more sections of the chapter I'd like to, and they're both interrelated. One is called conditional probability, which we'll do first, and then we'll answer the uh, question, are the two variables independent? In other words, is somebody's Knowing somebody's a male or a female, does that help you predict if they're going to be a finance major or not? Which, you know, predicting these kind of things is a very important part of practical statistics. So conditional probability is calculating the probability, very similar to what we've been doing, but get being told further information or further conditions on the problem. So for example, and we can do it again, and, and, the, and the, can solve all these problems of the entire chapter for by so-called common sense without any formula. And you're entitled to do that on the test, except I prefer doing it both ways so you can make sure that's definitely right. If you know for a fact somebody's a male, okay, again, that's, a, that's, not a, that's the condition. You're told, you're told supposing somebody's a male, or assuming somebody's a male, or we know for a fact somebody's a male, what is the chance that person's going to be a finance major? Again, that's different. What's the chance somebody's going to be a fi finance major, which is P of Y, is going to be, how many Ys are there? 73 out of 100. So if you're not told any, if it's unconditional, simply 73 out of 100 is a chance of being a finance major. But I'm asking you a slightly more complicated question. We're told further information. In particular, we're told the guy's definitely a male. It's not, not everybody, just the guy's definitely a male. What is the chance that particular person happens to be also a finance major? Yes, Will? 48%. So, not 48%, you mean 48 out of? 48 out of 100. OK, so the 48 part is right. But again, think about it. By saying, but, but, okay, so what's the difference if I would tell you, okay, I understand the mistake, you're, why you're making the mistake. It's a subtle point, and I'm sure you'll get it in a couple of seconds. You're saying, I'm telling you that the guy is definitely a finance major. Okay, so you're saying we're still dealing with 100 people, but the reality is we're not dealing with 100 people anymore. We're dealing with just these people who are finance majors. I'm sorry, we're saying the guy's definitely a male, right? The guy's definitely a male. So we're talking about these 60 people. So the answer is 48 out of, so the answer to the question, what's the chance that somebody's a finance major given, and this is the first time anybody probably saw the symbol, 48, uh, given, given that the guy's a male, okay, it means given or it means given or assuming or, or supposing. I mean, in English you can say it probably five different ways. Suppose the guy's a male, assume the guy's a male, we're given the fact that the guy's a male. So we're talking what's called technically restricted sample space. It's not the whole sample space of 100. It's only a sample space of 60. And I, and I think I forgot to, t I told you I was going to skip the early part of the chapter where I told you all these definitions about sample spaces. We'll come back to it perhaps after the, uh, the cameraman leaves. But, um, but we're talking about a restricted sample space of 60. And therefore, the answer is, for, by the common sense method, 48 out of 60. So the answer, after all is said and done, the answer is 48 out of 60. Let's take one more of these. What's the chance somebody's a male, given that they're a finance major? So we know for a fact this guy is definitely a finance major. That's not a, that's not a doubt. That's not a probability. It's 100% sure. What is the chance that person happens to be a male? Could be male, could be female. Yes? 48 out of 73. So now the answer is going to be still 48, but now it's the, we're talking about the 73 people who are definitely finance majors. So let me just pass this back to Will and to Tim. Okay, now the question is how can you do this by a formula? And again, a formula is always good to have, even though it's pretty simple. The formula says you break the problem up into two unconditional probabilities. And you'll see, without proving the formula, I think you'll see automatically why, it's, why it works. You break it up into Y and M. And divide it by P of the M. So again, the formula says if you have a, one of these conditional probabilities, assuming you set it up correctly, if you want to do it mechanically, you do the Y and the M, which is a, how we learned about it last time. Called, it's by this called a joint probability. The joint probability of Y having two characteristics simultaneously. And it divided by the probability of the given M. And the, our typical mistake on the test, people divide it by Y. That's incorrect. You divide it by the M. If you plug numbers into this, you're going to see 48 divided by 100, because this is, again, unconditional. Y and M is going to be 48 divided by 100. The M by itself, we said, was 60 out of 100. 
And after doing the inverting and multiplying, cross, you know, the hundreds cancel, and the, F, the and answer after all is said and done is 48 divided by 60. Doing this one more time, what is the chance of m given y? Well, the formula says break it up into two pieces, m and y, which is easy, and divide it by the y, not the m, by the y. And this comes out to, again, 48 divided by 100. And the bottom part, y, there's how many y's are there? 73 y, so it's 73 out of 100. And again, the hundreds cancel eventually, and you're left with 48 divided by 73, or 48 divided by 73. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got some musical background to the, to the, to the tape. That's great. OK, so now we have, that's, that, is that clear? In fact, let's, let's, let's practice one more of these before I move on to the last part of the chapter. Um, everybody should try to do right now, and of course you'll do this for homework. So if, but for case I forget, the homework is, well, I'll tell you the homework after the camera guy leaves. Um, the, let's take P of N given F. Let's calculate P of N. Try to do it both ways, both by common sense and by the formula. And then we'll share the answer in a couple of seconds. And if you get it wrong, we'll figure out why it's wrong. Well, hopefully everybody gets it right. P of, I mean, what's the chance somebody is a non-finance major or plans not to be a finance major? And we're talking about a female. The person's definitely a female that we're talking about here. Even though you can do the answer in your head you know, with, without a formula in three seconds, take a couple of more seconds and do it by the formula. Because sometimes the formula is, is helpful. I don't, I don't know if nobody's either raised. Anybody have an answer already? Okay, uh, who has an answer? Laura, you don't have your name out, so it would be waste your name anyway, but okay, Laura. Um, 15 out of 40. Do you think the answer is how much again? 15 over 40. 15 divided by 40. Let's see. The person's definitely a female, so we're talking about these 40 people. So 15 over 40 is definitely the right answer. And to do this by the formula, let's do it by the formula thing, P of N and f divided by f. Okay, it's very important you put the vertical line, to the right of the vertical line goes to the bottom, and that's going to be 15 out of 100, 40 out of 100, and 15 out of 40, in fact, is the right answer. And you want to pass it back to the Lord, please? Anybody else with any questions before we move on to the last part of the chapter? The last part of the chapter is going to use this information to come to really the purpose of the chapter. The purpose of the chapter is when you collect data involving two variables, one of the things you'd like to know as a manager, as a person using the data, is does one variable have an impact on the other variable? Now sometimes the impact can go from this side to this side, go from the columns to the rows. Sometimes it goes from the rows to the columns, or sometimes it goes in both directions. So here, for example, you can imagine that somebody's sex might influence the choice of majors. Like, like practically every male wants to be a finance major and every female does not. So certainly your sex influences your choice of major or vice versa. It's hard to imagine how somebody's choice of major can influence their sex, unless maybe finance majors have sex change operations, which I don't think is the case. But, uh, but it's hard to imagine it goes in the other direction. And sometimes you can imagine a situation where it goes in both directions. But right now we're talking about, you know, that's not really a problem right now. We're, now we want to know are the two variables, namely somebody's sex and somebody's choice of major, are they related? Now, there are two possibilities. Either they're separate or they're related. Now, we don't call, we call them, if they're totally separate, we call that independent. Independent. That's the word for totally unrelated. And if there's a, a carryover, knowing somebody's sex ha helps you predict if they're going to be a finance major or not, we call that dependent. So the two possibilities are independent or dependent. So it's almost like a true-false question. In the independent, dependent. Now, somebody might say, what if it's like just slightly related? Well, that's, that would be a very good question, because in STAT 2, we're going to learn a much more realistic way of solving these problems. In STAT 2, we're going to learn that you can have a gray area. It can be a little bit related, a lot related, hardly related, very much related. There's all kinds of degrees of gray, which is, of course, real life is like that. But right now, in STAT 1, we're learning it really simplistically. Either they're related, either slightly or a lot doesn't make a difference, or totally unrelated. Those are the two possibilities, either independent or dependent. Now, when it turns out we're going to learn how to solve this problem two or three different ways, by common sense, by a formula, in fact, two different formulas. Um, and each time you do it, you have a choice to focus on this row 
and this column, or this column, and this row. There are so many different rows and columns.